we're at to that part of the message where we bring forth the word. And even as Pastor Wayne comes, I pray that the word, the dunamis power, the rima word of God will come forth. Even now, Lord, I pray that your angels will encamp and accompany him, O God Almighty, that nothing spoken as you promise your word will not return void. Nothing spoken will fall upon deaf ears. We pray and we call for clarity, revelation, O God. We pray for fertile soil upon the hearts of your people, that your people will be edified and that God will be glorified. And we come in agreement for this in the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Amen. Pass away and I hand over to you at this time. Greetings, greetings, greetings. It has been such a um, wonderful, wonderful session so far. Um, it, it's such a great thing when we come together in fellowship because, you know, God is so true to his word that he is there in the midst of it. The Holy Spirit is there. Christ is in the midst of it. And we will be blessed. I know that if you tune yourself into the conversation this morning, I don't know about you, but I feel blessed. I mean, my soul is watered. The, the, the shares were so very insightful. Uh, it's just such a joy to watch how um, this family has evolved. Um, you know, the, everyone that shared came from a place that was so very, um, you, it's relatable because all of us have different areas of our lives. I mean, this, this scripture that we read this morning addresses so much, so many different areas of our walk that it is hard for you not to see yourself in it. <laughs> you understand? So it was very intentional, as, as, as the worship song said today, that we can all relate to a part of it, whether it is about restraining your tongue, whether it's about restraining your anger, whether it's about just the trying of your faith. All of this is relevant to us in our Christian walk. And so this is the thing about the word <laughs> Christ always speak about, uh, he, he spoke about the, the Pharisee that went into the temple. And when he walked up and started praying, he's, he was, you know, saying, Lord, I thank you that I'm not like this uh, tax collector, this publican beside me. Because it's always, it's when we think we are, Paul said, when we think we stand, we have to be so careful because we we may fall. And we don't want to preach others into the kingdom and become ourselves a castaway. So it's so very important that we come under the light of the word because the word reveals to us. It is there for, for very true, for correction and for doctrine and for everything to make sure that we are thoroughly furnished, thoroughly furnished. And that's why we don't ever want to forsake the word of God. I, every day our prayer should be, Lord, order our step in your word, in your word. Lead us, lead us according to your word. I just want to pray because I am so blessed and I don't think we're going to be here for too long today because this word is kind of self-explanatory. We're still going to stay there in James and we're just going to talk through. Um, for a little bit, I want to share with you um, the, the insight that, 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 that grasped James, that, that persuaded him to write. One of the things that I love with these short books <laughs> Whenever you touch a book like Jude or you touch a book like James that only have like five chapters, Jude is like one chapter. The writer approaches, the, he approaches the, 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 the angle of, of delivery from such comprehensive standpoint because he says, you know what, I have limited, uh, call it pages, to really uh, portray and to give you the, the nuggets that are going to really propel you. So you don't have time to build up the story and give you, tell you environment and birds and bees and things that are irrelevant. He goes straight to the gumption. <laughs> and I love those letters because they are so very, they go straight, they go straight to the point and just hit you say, these are the things that you need to be careful of. These are the things that will guide you. Understand that when this happens, it is not for that purpose, but for this purpose. And so, you know, it's just an amazing thing when we get into the word of God. I want to just take time just to greet you and say, welcome. Thank you so much for being a part of PLM, uh, Pure Love Ministry, and, and, to, and to fellowship with us on this Sabbath 
morning, you know, so people were in celebration yesterday. I know a lot of people eat a lot of food and, you know, you might be feeling wrong. I, 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 the praise and worship was of such today that we could get up and dance a little. I, I, my soul was watered every single preceding the prayer that went forth. I hope you feel empowered already because understand it. The reason why we don't forsake the assembly is that we, the people of God, we are supposed to be edifying and being a blessing to each other. You are a blessing to me. I am a blessing to you. And as, and as Evangelist said earlier today, everyone who is a part of the family of God has been entrusted with a gift. <laughs> and when you come and you share that, when you share your insight, that's what we love here. We say that this forum is not for only certain class of persons who are allowed to speak. The children can speak in pure love ministry. This is the way God showed it to me. We have purpose in our heart that we are not going to do it differently from Christ. Whatever Christ did, that's what we are doing. And so we are very militant about that, that we are walking out because we are called, as my wife would say, we are called to be Christians. That means that we are, we are of Christ. What we do is what Christ does. We don't, we, we don't try to, to, to come up with any new revelation when that which is already being laid, the foundation is already being laid, laid. Now the spirit of God can lead you into our truth. And so we are, we are following him and his word. He will never deviate from his word. And so we anchor all our belief, all our faith in the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm going to ask you right now, if you're out there in social media land, if you're out there in YouTube, if you're out there on, on Facebook, if you're out there on Instagram, just go ahead and hit that share button. I believe that God has a word for the nation today. And I do want you to be a part. Just do your part. Sometimes it's, it's like the woman at the well. All she had to do was just run to the village and say, come see a man. For you today, your come see a man is just to click that share, click that share button, put it on your page, invite, send it to your groups that you have all around and tell them that the word, the bread of life is about to be broken. The word of God is about to be spoken today. And when that word goes forth, God says it in his word will never return void and it will accomplish that which Christ had set it to accomplish. So let us just... um get in prayer we're going to talk a little bit about the book of james james we're going to get talk a, a, a bit about uh, james chapter one that's where we're going to stay today we are going to talk we're going to reason together and i may open the mics and invite you into this conversation again because today it is more of a reasoning than a speaking at you for those who are newcomers to this to this culture of worship worship what we do in this culture of worship is that we have we have conversations and reasoning on the word you get a, 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 a access to ask your questions you get access to, to 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 tell what the spirit of god is speaking to your heart because i want you to understand this the word of god says we are the spirit of god is there is liberty it says christ said if i go i will send you the comforter he will send you the teacher the counselor and if you are saved and if you have the spirit of God, it means that God can speak to you. And I always use this analogy. I always use this reference, the reference of Samuel. Samuel being a young boy in the house of Eli, the high priest. And God chose to speak to the young boy. Sometimes we don't hear God's message because we, we try to silence people. There's a spirit. This, this demonic spirit that operates in the church that likes to silence the people of God. Now I say to you, stand up and, 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 and open your mouth and declare, thus say the Lord, <laughs> according to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Do not allow yourself to be led by the flesh, but by the spirit. And once the spirit of God has, 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 has boiled up on the inside and once it permeates you from the inside, you open up your mouth and speak, thus say the Lord, as you hear it downloaded from the spirit of God to your spirit. It says that God is a spirit. They that worship him must. They that worship him must. You must. There is no other way to worship God but in spirit and in truth. And so today we say, open up your spirit as we go in prayer that we can touch heaven and then God can return. 
just lift us up by his divine strength. Father, we lift you up now. We adore you. We magnify you. You are our heavenly father. God, we can do nothing without you. But we thank you that you have sent your word ahead of time. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, that you are Alpha and Omega, that you are never surprised. I thank you that I serve a God that is omniscient. I thank you that I serve a God that is omnipotent. I thank you, Lord God, that you are all knowing that you are, you, you, you are ever present. You are omnipresent. We don't have to call and wait on a, on a call, wait or, 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 or get a dial tone or a busy signal. You are always available to everyone. And God, we bless your name because you are great. You are magnificent and you are holy. We install you right now, God, as we come before you now, Jesus. We lift you up, Yeshua Amashiach. You are the resurrected king. The one who has conquered death and the grave. God, you have declared it, Lord God. And the word of God has said it, that this same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead shall quicken our mortal bodies and we shall not obey the lost hereof. So God, I say now, send the quickening spirit and ignite us, everyone within earshot from the inside, Lord God, and, and, and permeate our very souls, our minds, our bodies. We, we, we rebuke the spirit of distraction. We rebuke everything, Lord God, that comes to, this, to, to distract and derail the word of God. We say now, let this word take seed in the heart of your people. Let the soil be fertile to receive your word this day. God, we come to you now, and I say, let no flesh Glory in your presence, Yahweh. But you alone be lifted up. You alone be glorified. You alone be magnified. Lord God, we know you will share your glory with none other. So God, you be lifted up. El Elohim. Hallelujah. We magnify your name. And we say, do what only you alone can do, Holy Spirit, which is to bring the increase now. As we plant and we may water, but you bring the increase in the name of Yeshua Amashiach. Let the church of God, wherever you are, say amen. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Wherever you are, just go ahead and clap your hands and give God a praise. You don't have to open your mic, but make some noise in your house. Let, don't let no demon come into your house and live freely. Let them know you are paying rent. Wherever you are, just know that your space where you are, the spirit of God should be with you. You understand? Entertain him and keep your hearts and minds stayed on him. He promised he will keep you in perfect peace. So we want to look at the scripture today. We're going to touch, we're going to touch and move today. And we want to talk about James. Uh, just a little background on, on James. James was the, is the half brother of Christ. And of course, you have to understand that Christ generally you know, have half brothers in the natural because, um, you know, he was sent from above. So every other, every other son or children of, of Mary would have to be from one side because he's the only one, the only begotten of the father. And so Jesus Christ, while he was um, in his ministry on earth, uh -huh, we get a tone from his speech when he spoke. That is it when his disciples said to him, look at it, there is your mother, there is your family over there. And he turned to them and he says, listen, who is my mother? Who, is my, who, are, who are my family? And he says, those who do my father's will. That would give us a kind of a, a tone based on the language theologians um, um, theorize that that tone would send a message to say that Christ during his lifespan Enough of uh, his brothers and so forth did not really uh, uh, believe in his ministry that much because they were not, you know, sometimes you, God call you to a thing and it's almost, people may look at Christ now in the past and years and, and decades and centuries of past and you look at it and you say, it seems as though the work that was done by Christ must have been a glamorous thing. And so we have this, this ideology and this thing that we have today that represents this glitter and this glamour of ministry that we may want to project 
on Christ. We may want to project on the Apostle Paul. We may want to project it on Peter. But you want to understand it, that, that this call was a taking up of your cross. It was a taking up of some, something that feels like a burden. And so, and, 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 and so Christ said, pick up your cross and follow me. But I, 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 I'm going there to tell you that because I'm going somewhere with the picture of who James represented in the lifetime of Christ and who he represented when Christ died and resurrected. James was one of those who in Christ's lifetime was not one of his faithful followers, but then after Christ died, died, he was one that came into the revelation of who Christ was when he met the resurrected Christ, like the apostle Paul. A few of those apostles in those early ages did not know, they did not come, they did not believe on Christ while he was walking, but Christ revealed himself afterwards, James was one of those. And after coming in contact with the resurrected Christ, James start this book off, not by putting himself into some esteemed position, but he says, firstly, James, a bond servant of God and Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ. He did not even refer to Christ within the capacity of my brother. He didn't refer to Christ within the capacity of anything else but my Lord. And he spoke of himself as a bond servant. I want to spend just a few seconds and talk a little bit about what does a bond servant means. A bond servant means that you have you were you were in slavery and given the freedom to move to 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 to, to leave your position and be free. In other words, you have been given the choice to be free and you choose to remain in slavery. That's what a bond servant, it is a free will servant, somebody who decides that I am going to do this on my own free will and stay with my master and serve. This is the situation that James said, I am a bond servant. I am a free will servant who have, who have committed myself to, to Christ and to the mission of the gospel. When we talk about the gospel sometimes as it relates in the early church, it doesn't seem as glamorous because your life would be threatened. It doesn't seem as glamorous because you were liable to be beaten. It didn't seem as glamorous because we weren't, we weren't under the bright lights. They were in the corner, in the trenches, speaking a gospel that was not popular. And in the midst of that, these, these men of God and women of God and the followers of Christ, Christ, Christ gave them a fire. <laughs> that was able to sustain them during the course of the adversities that they would encounter. I'm going somewhere with this, and I want you to stay with me. You're going to see that James is going to speak to the believers, you and I. The language that he speaks and the tone that he's delivering here is a message that is comprehensive even from the introduction of chapter 1. And what he says in chapter one, he starts out by declaring God and declaring Christ, putting them in proper perspective and then putting himself into a position of saying, I am a servant of the most high God, his most glorified, his most esteemed title. As an apostle, he did not come through, even the apostle Paul, he comes through on, a, on, 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 on holding himself as a servant. And he says, this is my position, and this is what I say. And he says, I'm writing to the 12 tribe <laughs> that are scattered abroad. And then he goes into his greetings. And then Paul's, and then, and then, and then James said, now, this is not the apostle Paul as we often see, because most of those New Testament books were written by him. But this is James now. And James said, my brethren, count it all joy. <laughs> When you fall into virus trials, knowing that, that your, the testing of your faith will produce patience. And this is the thing now. So there is something that is being produced <laughs> by the testing of your faith. And today we want to talk about the human resource development department of heaven, of God of Christ, because there are three things that we find that is, is, is really 
pointed out in this introduction of, of the book of James. And we want to really go there and see God has three stages. And I like, I want to, everyone spoke very potently, but I, I felt like Sister sister Gia went into the sermon. So, so it's like you went right into it and came out. <laughs> that was just a wonderful dissecting of, of, of the section that you chose. And I, I really want to compliment everyone that spoke this morning. It is It, it shows the growth and the maturity of the body and, and the persons who are who, who are being a part of, of, of what we are doing here. I'm so happy and delighted that you're allowing the spirit of God to show you the deep things of God because no man knows that. That's the spirit of God. So we give him all the glory. Now back to what I was saying, the human resource development program of the believers. And if you want to just highlight from James 1 and verse 2 through to 5, uh, stage 1 involves trials. I want you to mark that and write it down wherever you're making notes. We are talking about the three, the three stages. The stages that, that James is making sure that he brings forward in, in his outline. We say what? Stage 1 involves trials. As he says there, in verse 2 through to 5, he says, he says, as many as we need, we are going to receive. We're going to, so the, the trials that come to us, as many as we may need, we don't think we need it, but what we are asking for, we are praying for something, and we pray for one thing that we say, God, give me, give me this position, give me this, give me this job, give me this, give me this attributes. And we pray for certain, certain of the character of the fruit of the spirit. And we don't understand that the character is tied to certain, certain things that we consider to be the process. Because we understand that the process, the process has to be fully completed. And I often refer the people of God to the book of, of, of the Psalm, of Psalm 103, where David was, was the writer there, and I believe it was Moses that wrote that Psalm. Moses said that when he spoke there in that Psalm, he says that uh, the, the, the Spirit of God was, was upon him, and the Spirit of God says, Moses, I show my ways, but the people my acts. There is a people that exist. The people who were of the Israel did not, were, were not concerned and, and did not want to go through the process to learn the ways of God. They did not want to go through what patience was supposed to develop in them to learn the ways of God. What they wanted was the meat. What they wanted was the manner. What they wanted was the clothing. What they wanted was all of the, all of the niceties, the benefits that come, but they were not concerned with the process. And so when God decided I wanted to descend off the mountain, Moses, tell my people to prepare themselves because the very, I want to, come down off this mountain. I want them to come up and have fellowship with me. When they felt the very presence, they sanctified themselves, felt the very presence of God coming, and they said, no, we don't want to experience God like that, Moses. You talk to God for us. <laughs> Let God just give us the meat and give us the water and give us the bread and give us all the joyous things and the nice it is. The nice it is is what. So we take, you see what happened with Christmas now? They, 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 they have shifted Christmas from the point of, 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 of focusing on the gift that is supposed to be Christ, this day that is dedicated, although we know it not, it's not the exact date, but we're talking about some of the shifting that take place for the appetite of men. So they shifted this season which was supposed to be about Christ, and they move it to a place where it becomes about Santa Claus. Why is it so that Santa Claus can be so good for the sensitized people, for the persons who are operating in the sensual? Because it is about getting, it's about somebody who walks around without any form of lifestyle, without any form of, of, of you having to bring any order to your life. You receive, you receive, you receive. So it's about wish, 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 get, 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 but not about process. And so we try to move away from the process of what God wanted us to do in forming godly character. So let's talk about this. So we said, number one, Moses said, God says that, listen, people, I want you to have a relationship with me, but they chose not to because the process of the relationship was too costly in their eyes. I think God wants to have a relationship with his people today, but a lot of people are not so concerned with the process. They are more concerned with wanting to receive the meat and the bread. 
I'm going somewhere. So we say that here now, let's bring it back to James. And we are saying that James is trying to get our people, the people of God in the New Testament, the people in the ecclesia, in, in the church age, to understand something very, very, very serious. He's saying that, knowing that, that the trying of your feet, <laughs> you understand the testing, bridging, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations and trials, uh, knowing not that the testing of your feet produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing, if you lack wisdom. So let us even, before we go to the wisdom portion of it. So he's saying that you have got to go through the process. You have got to go through the process. You have got to go through the process to get to the place where this character. So we say, one, God says that you have got to go through. The first thing that you have to do is that you have to endure the trials. And that leads you to the next stage, which is stage two, which is that you have to have patience. So you see what he says? You have got to allow patience to work its process that you can receive the perfect, the perfection that God wants to bring you to. Why does God want to do that with patience in your life? That's the question you should ask. And that would lead to stage three. Stage three says that he's waiting for what? God wants to give you the wisdom, but wisdom is God's goal for growth in the personal kingdom. He wants to form something in you that when he looks at you, he sees himself. God is not interested in the handouts. He's interested in the character. That is why God was a friend of Moses, Abraham, and these men of all these patriots that we are studying in Bible study because of the character. God says that the reason why I've given to you my spirit, my anointing, and what I want to work in you is this process so that it gets to perfection, that you will lack nothing. That is what God wants for us as a people. And today, I'm reaching out to you to say that there is where God wants to take us. He wants to bring us to a place where we can receive from him the things that he has in store. Now, we see that uh, uh, James move on, and he says, but for you to receive, yes, you must have the patience. Yes, you must have, uh, uh, you're going to go through the trials, and you must endure it like a, like a good soldier. And yes, wisdom, wisdom is the ultimate de uh, uh, destination where you want to go to. And we say that when you define wisdom, wisdom is what? It is, is, is knowledge of the word, understanding of the word, put in action. Then you know that you are wise. Then you know that you are walking according to the word, according to the spirit, walk in the spirit, walking in the spirit. You want to understand what it means to walk in the spirit? Walk in the spirit is not just walking in, in the feeling alone. Because sometimes we talk about spirit and we make spirit to be just a feeling. But I want to tell you more, more correctly what spirit is. Spirit is the spirit as it defines in the old armor. It says helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, sword of, it says uh, your, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Take up the, the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And so when you are led by the spirit, it means that you are, you are a person who operates in obedience, even when you are tested, as what, the, as what James is saying here. The test will not deter you. It will not cause you to derail. And so right after telling you that you have to be tenacious through the test, he moves to his next point by speaking to what is required. He says, and this is one thing that, uh, that, that Sister Gia opened up, he spoke to the fact of that, the faith that must endure in you. That when you are tested, that when you come into the situation where certain things are, are, are put your way, he says, but let him ask. He says that uh, if, 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 if you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally uh, without reproach. And it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith without uh, without no doubt uh, because uh, if you doubt God you are like a you, you are like a wave uh, of, of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind and he says now in verse 7 he says for let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord he is a double-minded man unstable in all his ways what is the word of God saying so he starts out by telling you the necessity of staying the course in patience he's and then he moves into talking about how so this is one thing that you have to read the word with with perspective he tells you what and then he tells you how he tells you that for you to 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 to, to endure in patience and endure it as, as a good soldier 
measure and, and allow uh, allow patience to have its perfect work, you must also understand that you must take God as his word. You must get godly wisdom. And godly wisdom is understanding that you live your life believing in the word of God completely without questioning. When, if God says it, in other words, what James is saying is that if you come to God, here's the thing, Christ, there is little faith and there is no faith and there is, and, and, and there is great faith. But when you talk about faith, any faith at all to work, it must believe completely, even if it's the size of a mustard seed. And that is why Christ said to you, if you have faith, if you have that believe in me completely in any area that is as so tiny as this, if you have that kind of faith, you will speak to the mountain and it will be cast into the sea. You will say, get out of my way and the mountain will move. So this faith that he's speaking of is an unwavering faith. And you know what the enemy is trying to do? He's trying to throw his darts at you. The fiery darts into your ears to persuade you that, well, peradventure, maybe this is not what God means. Maybe. So now you are, you are toyed between the world's way. And now this is what is happening in the church today. And I'm speaking to the church based on what we are seeing. We are seeing it unfold. And we as the people and the prophets and the, and the teachers and, and, and those who are anointed, we have got to see, to look at the apostasy and call it what it is. We see now this sensual situation that exists today where people are double-minded because we see that, uh, okay, let us do a compromise in God. You know, you have to compromise. We're going to operate outside of the box. We're going to, we, we got to step out of the box and do things a little bit the way how the world will like it. So I'm telling you today that God is saying that the standard of God is the standard of God. And if God says thou shall not, that is exactly what he means. There is no there is no middle ground. There's no shift in it. There's no watering it down. It means that you take his word and you obey it and you believe it and you walk in it. And who is the person in the old in Genesis that we studied who did that well? It was Abraham. It was counted unto Abraham to be righteousness. He was considered to be a father of faith, not because of everything else that was going on around him, because even before he was sanctified, we spoke about this before, he was considered to be a man of faith. And Paul said it was counted to him as righteousness. Why? Because when he heard the word of God, he did not hesitate and question God. What he did was just move upon the word and the command of God. So what Abraham did, Abraham just heard God said, I want you to leave your father's house and come out of, out of the city of Ur and I will send you to a place that I will show you. And upon God speaking, upon God's word, Abraham moved. And because of that, that was considered to be faith. And that's why we say faith is action. Because if you understand the word of God, that's why we say wisdom and faith and action. That is what proves wisdom when faith is put in action. When the belief in God's word is put in action, then the result is being wise. It's, being, it's having a person who lives a lifestyle of faith. So we see Abraham. Abraham being a patriot in that way. And now we can make some reference to these guys simply because all they did was answer and obey the voice, the word, the call, the leading, the direction, what God has spoken. They just say, you know what, I'm going to move with you, Lord. I might not understand everything, but I believe you completely. And that is what the Holy Spirit wants to remind us of today. He wants you to know that whatever the challenge is, Whatever it is that you are going through, whether in your marriage, whether in your with your children, whether it is whether it is just with, with your own lifestyle, whether it be depression, whatever it is that the enemy is speaking, God sent me here to remind you today that you have got to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean up to your own understanding, meaning that the moment that you start questioning the word of God, it becomes a block. That's the scheme. That's the trick. That's the wild. That's what causes the confusion. And then it, the Bible here, James calls such a person a double-minded man because you figure to yourself that maybe I can do it the world's way and maybe I can do it half and half God's way. And God is saying, your name must be named. Your no must be no and your yes must be yes. Because he says if you if you dabble in the world and you dabble in Christendom, then he says that you are lukewarm. And if you are lukewarm in the middle, it means that he says that I will spew you out because you're of no use to me. You are insipid. 
And God is saying to his people, it is time now that we stop from hearing his word. James went down further and he speak about those who are hearers of the word and not doers of the word. You hear his word, you hear what he's saying, but at the same time you walk away with your own. And that is a conflict that he's speaking of when he talks about the double mind. You walk away with your own different uh, uh, th ideologies that you think you know. And you choose to compromise on God's word and not believe it and operate in it completely. That is where we walk in the double-mindedness. And that is the place where you wonder why you get beaten. You wonder why every prayer that you pray don't go through because it's a prayer of faith. It has to be a prayer that completely believe God's word. We talk about uh, 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 the package that God has. God said that when the benefit package, when you come under the salvation plan, under the salvation plan, when you come on the Lord's side, he says, I have some benefits, some benefits that I have for you. And one of those those benefits is healing. I know we teach basic Christianity, but a lot of times we try to get too complicated and too deep, and we miss the deep things of God that are so simple, which is to say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. He says that, listen, if you hear my word, my word, harden not your heart. Make your heart receptive to his word, and just believe it without doubting, and it shall be done. That is what God has promised. But when we allow ourselves to get the sensual mixed into what we want to believe, then we become swaying on every side and we become double-minded and we can't receive. And a lot of us feel like, you say, why people in church seem to be stuck? because they are one foot in and one foot out. You cannot do that in Christendom. What you gotta do is commit your ways, commit your ways unto him, commit your ways unto him. He says, but the apostle Paul says, uh, presenting your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, meaning that reasonable service for you to receive those benefits. If, if I say to you that something is reasonable, do you know what I'm speaking to? I'm, I'm automatically telling you that, okay, I'm going to give you my pen for that book, and that should be a reasonable trade. It means that there's an exchange that's taking place. And when the Apostle Paul says to you that you should present your bodies as a living sacrifice, we should present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. What he is saying there is that, for the benefits that you will be receiving for laying down your body and your and, and your life as a living sacrifice, those benefits that you are going to get is something that is, is beyond what you what you could ever ask or think. Because God's benefits are, 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 are beyond <laughs> what you are the sacrifice that you think you are making. It's a small thing. It's a small thing. Because at one point, Paul even say, he, he, he says the word that, listen, uh, the, these light afflictions <laughs> cannot be compared to the glory that God has in store for us. They are light afflictions. The thing that you think is so difficult, that you think is so hard, you say to yourself, for me to live a life of purity, for me to abstain from, from running from one woman and, and partying and clubbing and drinking and having a good time, it seems so difficult. I have to go and revel. I have to go and please my sensual lifestyle that I, 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 I so uphold and, and, and so precious to me. God is saying, if you would lay down that and realize the benefits that I have in store for you. And that is what he's speaking to. He's saying here, double-minded person, release everything. Don't get caught up and be tossed by the wind. Every wind that come about, you find yourself get tossed in it. Because now you are wrapped up in one thing and you just say to yourself that, you know what, this is the new thing that is coming in, so let me walk with it. This is the other new thing that comes. The thing about the people of God, we, the word of God says you are, you are a chosen people. You are a set-apart nation. You have been called and bought and purchased and you are peculiar. And you have been put into a position of power to impact. And Christ called us salt and light for a reason because we are the one that transforms our environment not the environment transforms us come on evangelist do you have a word you want to share in this come on i saw you i saw you came up <laughs> well, yes yes pastor i'm brought back to um the stage one mm -hmm. the trials as in james one two to three yes because 
Many of us may be going through a trial right now. We may be at the different stages of the trials. Our trials are not even the same. Whether you want to say it's a financial or physical or, you know, just um, try to develop that fruit. But what's so important to realize is that um, James basically saying that, listen, this is something that we're all going to face. Yes. You know, we are not too spiritual or too Christian not to face trials and tests. We yes. all have trials. We all have tests. Yes. What's so important, he comes on to verse 12 and he said, Blessed is the man that endureth the temptation. <laughs> For when he is tried, yes. he receives the crown of life, which the Lord had promised to them that love him. Hmm. God is so good that he's saying that, listen, this is the consequences of your trial. You're going through a trial right now. This is a test. Mm -hmm. What's important for us to do as believers is to identify the trial or the test. Mm -hmm. You can identify it many times to say, God, what, what character or fruit are you trying to develop for me by, mm -hmm. by this test that I'm going through? Yes. Trying to help me to say, listen, I, I need you to grow in giving. I need you to grow in self-control. Mm -hmm. I need you to grow in love. Mm -hmm. So God, he doesn't, he doesn't say, he, he's not the one that tempt, tempt us. He said he tempts no one because we are pulled away by our own loss. The mere fact that we are pulled away by that loss, it means that there's something in us. Mm. You know, I say to, um, to, to Peter, Christ said to Peter, listen, the enemy sought to sift you, but I prayed for you. Mm -hmm. So many times, we have come, yes, we have come as born again believers, but there are many things in us that still needs to be processed. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we are drawn away and we are pulled by these things that are processing us. It may be a lust of the flesh, a lust of the eye, a pride of life. Mm -hmm. Things may come into our life that God may allow it to happen, that the process may take through because he needs to refine us. And if you find yourself keep going through that test, it yes. means that there's still a refining. Yes, it means there's some residue of this thing in your life that needs to be addressed so that you could go on to the next level. The important thing you went on to say in verse 15 that says, this is the next flip side of it. Then when lust had conceived, it bring forth sin. And when sin is finished, it bring it forth death. Yes. So this is what it is. I face the test, I face the test and trial. How I respond to it, how I identify it, how soon I respond, I identify, deal with, okay, quicker, I move on. If I identify that, you listen, you know, God forbid I've been, been tested with this lust of the flesh. God, I see what it is. I'm going to put my flesh under subjection. I'm yes. going to lock it down. I'm not going to look at that thing. I'm not going to hear that conversation because I know that I have a weakness in this area, but no. God is perfecting me. If I lock it down and move on, I get the reward and yes. aim for the crown of glory. More than likely, you don't have to face that test again. God will look, okay, there's another character to be refined in you. Mm -hmm. Let's flip side of it. If you decide, boy, it feels nice in my flesh, mm -hmm. I'm going to go through it, it's going to lead to death. Yes. Death separation from God. You have been seeking God to get closer to him to get to that level, but this thing keeps blocking you to get to that level. Yes. Because Remember, the objective of Holy Spirit is for us to go from glory to glory to glory. It's for edification of our church and the edification of ourselves. So many of us are stuck at the stage one. And I love the word of God in the New Testament because the Old Testament is a foreshadow. The foreshadow of this is when the children of Israel had to go through the wilderness for 40 years. And many of us, because we all are guilty for 40 years, we have been battling these tests for 40 years. We have been carrying these baggages because we have not opened our eyes and we keep saying, God, why does this keep happening to me? Why is it me? Because you keep failing the test. And as I was reading the book of Isaiah this morning, Holy Spirit reminded me that, listen, the Holy God himself said it. He did it with fear. And said, listen, I have warned my people. I've sent forth the word to my people. I've sent you forth the solution, but you keep ignoring it. And if you keep ignoring it, it shifts to a harden of the heart. So when the heart becomes hardened, Isaiah it said, is that, okay, it's time for judgment now. But I pray that as the word comes forth today, the heart of stone will be reduced to a pliable heart of clay, and that you may look and examine, examine the journey of your life. Why haven't you advanced past this area? Why is this thing keep coming back? Look and to see that you cannot try to attack. If you keep doing something the same way and no result, sometimes this is madness, although Einstein and sciences are different things. But if you keep doing it, accepting the same result, it is madness. Madness. Luda. 
as you're trying to fight the battle with a toothpick instead of saying, listen, I need to leave and to grab that axe and to cut it off once and for all. Hallelujah. Word is coming for to appeal to you, to appeal to someone saying that this thing in your life, it is causing a hindrance mm -hmm. and you cannot increase and you're not able to grow. Come on. So you're still stuck at stage one. Mm -hmm. But the anointing is coming forth from this word today because it's your chance to break free in the mm -hmm. name of so it's your chance to break through and say, listen, no longer I'm going, am I going to stay in this state. If I need to fast and pray, I'm going to fast and pray. Mm -hmm. But the devil will not have the victory in the name of Yeshua. Mm -hmm. I am an overcomer. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yeah. And I shall see my promised land. I shall not die in the wilderness. I shall mm -hmm. not wander 40 years. Mark. Go to my grave with this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because we keep coming back to If you don't fight it and beat it, you're leaving it for your generations to yes. deal with it. Yes. If you don't fight and deal with it, it's written in your DNA that you Come haven't on. conquered it. So Come it on. is passed on. So you have to be the one to say, you know what? It's even in your ancestors, some of the things that you're saying. You know, so God, the same thing keep coming back. The same. You have to be the one to listen. And it stops here. I will pass this trial and this test because I want that reward. This thing shall not lead to death. In the name of Yeshua, in the name Amen. of Jesus Christ, it shall Lord. not. I shall Lord. not die in this thing, but live to the Lord. clear. Come on, prophesy, woman of God. Come on. In the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. That is so powerful. That is so powerful. And evangelists, may the spirit of the living God just, just embrace you for that word. That is such a wonderful word. Poor point to just ribbit those women. I see some more hands going up, and this is how people might be watching this and say, What the pastor is in the middle of a sermon? How are other people speaking? This is how we do church. God don't speak to one person, God speaks to a community. God wanted community from the garden, and this is how we worship. This is how we break the bread. We are breaking bread, and everyone partakes, everyone speaks as the Holy Spirit gives you utterance. Go ahead. Um, I think the hand that was up. Go ahead, uh, Minister, Minister Nadine, and then Sister Brianna. Just really quickly, I just wanted to piggyback um, off of what Sister Denver, um, Evangelist Denver, was saying. Mm -hmm. And it's for everyone to think of this. Yes. Everything that you, everybody has been saying today is that we all fit in one of three categories. Yes. We're going through. Mm. We just came out. Yes. <laughs> and we're in it. Yes. So keep that in mind. Don't think that you're exclusive. Mm -hmm. Trials is not a respecter of anyone. Mm -hmm. They are here to sharpen us. So that's just a word yes. of, to, to everyone that just remember, you're either coming out, going in, or in the middle of. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Minister. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on, Sister Brianna, let me hear what God is saying through you. Go ahead. Um, all that I had to say was kind of like a mini testimony, basically based on what Evangelist Daniel was saying, because that really kind of struck with me with the whole like, you know, when you get tested in one thing and you actually pass the test, mm -hmm. a lot of the time after that, you don't even remember what was so hard about that thing. I, I find it for me, like when you've been tested in something and you actually get the victory over it, mm -hmm. it's almost like you're like, why, why was that so hard for me again? Mm -hmm. It's almost like um, your appetite for whatever it is that basically tempted you so much is, is gone. And you're like, well, even if I was to try and go back, I don't really, there's no fun in this. Anymore. <laughs> there's, there's no fun. And really, it's just, it's it's such a blessing because these things that we feel like we can't let go of that are so, I'm going to use the word addictive, um, that we feel like we're so dependent on because our body likes it, it feels good to our flesh. A lot of the times, if you will actually just be obedient to the word of God, because it hurts, it's not easy, it's not something that is fun to be detached from these things that you've been uh, basically use it as a crutch um, <laughs> for your life to make you feel better and to pick you up and all kinds of things. Uh, it's not easy to let go of these th things, but even me just thinking back, some of the things that were hard for me to let go of, now I'm like, man, 
I have no desire to go back. Yeah. None whatsoever. There's there's no I'm like, okay, yeah, no, eh, whatever, it's fine. Um, and it, it's really just meant to be an encouragement that even though right now whatever it is that <clears throat> is impressed on your heart is something that you need to let go of, that you need to um basically uh push through. Uh, even though it's hard right now, and it will be hard um, mm -hmm. to get rid of this thing, to basically starve it, um, it, it is worth it. And in the end, it will pay off. And um, yeah, and, and God will really just um, show you why this thing needed to be uh, left behind and why this life that you have now is um, better and more important and more beneficial to you. So yeah, that's it. Hallelujah. These are, you see why we love this kind of fellowship. Come on, come on, uh, Brother Kirk. Just go ahead and share, share, share. Come on. Just get into this word. Just break this bread. <laughs> uh, what I want to say now, dear to everyone, um, keep being true to the word hmm. and keep pressing. Because hear me out. You might be pressing and you might not see the result, no. But you have to realize, even if you don't get the result, mm -hmm. your descendant will reap the result. Yes. And you have to go in this, in thinking about interceding as well. Yes. Not only for yourself, but only for your families as, as well. But keep your end of the bargain because the covenant, God, God is really hmm. strict on covenant and keeping covenants. Hmm. Um, when Mr. Bishop... Um, they they came for Mr. Bishop. The, the, the king sent for Mr. Bishop. And the king said, bring him to me. Is there any descendant of Saul that is left? They found oh. him. He was cast off. He called himself a dog. Mm -hmm. He had no foot. He couldn't walk. Yes. And the king said, go get him. They find him. And he said, what the king would want with me? I am a dog. I am, I, I, I am, he, he, he just put out himself. But look what, because of the goodness of his father, God would allow hmm. David to sit for That's him. Yeah. Yeah. And he started eating mm -hmm. from David's table. Mm -hmm. And he That's got true. blessed by that. Come on. And because of the covenant and the love for God, because yeah. his father, Love David because his father knew that David was the right ear to the throne. Come on. And God would allow. He got messed up when he was, because he, he couldn't walk. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, mm -hmm. God allowed them to go and find him and bring him to the king. The king, when they got to him, they said, the king wants to see you. <laughs> he said, me, mm -hmm. me, Ukasa, which where he was wasn't even such a good place. They just that was people cast off in that place, mm -hmm. and they allowed to get that. They, they took him and bring him to the king mm -hmm. because of what the good. All of this is wrapped up into love. Yeah. All of this is wrapped up into good. All of this is wrapped up into sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. If you don't practice sound doc doctrine, it will not come back to you mm -hmm. because God is strict. The ark of the covenant. As I, as I keep speaking about the Ark of the Covenant and the and how you you got going about the specifications and how it should be built, yes. there is a loophole Come in on. holiness. God is holy. Let mm. us worship Him in, in truth and in spirit. Hallelujah. Bless you, man of God. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. This is a wonderful, a wonderful. This is what I I cherish so much about this fellowship. The fact that we can all empty because you see, this is how church is. It is supposed to be a situation that you're not supposed to come full because God can bring a word to you and you have this word and you're full and you go home back with the word and there's a brother or there's a sister who need that word and they never got it. But we want to open the forum. Um, 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 evangelist, you scroll on, or, or I see a hand go up. Just scroll on and see if there's any other hands because my, my mouse has died on me here. So let me know, apart from Minister Nadine, is there another hand up otherwise? No. I had my hand up. I wanted to just add to what Minister Nadine Go said ahead. earlier, just yes. to clarify. So Minister Nadine had mentioned that we are at different stages. Either we have been out of it, we are going into it, or, or otherwise. But one of the key points I want to add to what she said is that the length of your time that you go through it, <laughs> you can change. 
Mm -hmm. You understand? So if I am going through my test of um, anger, the length of the time, I, I don't have to go through it for 40 years. Mm -hmm comes back to what Brother Kirk has said is that I can remember the covenants of God. I can stand upon his word and I can declare the word and I have to become subjected and yielded to the word of God. So although I am going, how I go through my test mm -hmm. is what makes the difference. Mm -hmm. So as you mentioned, you may have be different stages, but how you go through it is, is like the children of Israel. It comes back to it. That's a typology. When they go through it, they have some went through it complaining and murmuring the entire way. And when they went through it complaining and murmuring, they did not get to see the land. These are typologies that Holy Spirit is giving us. And God actually let that, listen, none of you can go through the land. Mm -hmm. He made it that it's the next generation. Yes. So it comes back sometimes to you because of how you handle the thing. Yes. You don't up and see it. It's your children up and them can see it. So you don't want that to happen. You want you to get it. Mm -hmm. And it comes back to the people that spy out the land as well. Yes. To spy Report. Out the land. Yes. And two yeah. came back with a, a good report because of their faith. Mm -hmm. so you have to see all the stories in the Old Testament is pointing the way to Christ, is pointing the way to Holy Spirit, is telling you how to deal with Say so yes, there may be tests. You may just come out. They won't be going out of it. But, but how you handle yourself through the test is what's going to cause the breakthrough and what's going to cause the result. So you don't have to be underneath it and it to kill you because Yeshua, Jesus Christ, said, I will not give you more than you can bear. Yeah. Yes. Me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I'm going to give you rest. Mm -hmm. So you have to be, you're going through it, but you say, you know what, God? I am trusting you upon your word. Mm -hmm. And that's why we pray. That's why we intercede. That's why we buy. That's why mm -hmm. we castle. That's why we build up. Say, so yes, I, I, I am going through this, but the Lord shall supply my needs. I, I will make my character be developed because I want to see the promised land. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, minister. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Oh. You know, I just, just think we just need to just take time now. Hallelujah. And just praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Lord, and we just lift you, you up. And we you just exalt you. God, where you are. Come on. Hallelujah. Uh, you uh, you work it. I'm not a bush. I'm not a bush. I'm not a bush. I'm not a bush. God is just so amazing, and it, it just overwhelms me. Oh, I don't want it for lack of a better word of just how amazing God can truly be. And Brother Kirk, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but that was the spirit of God revealing that to you so many times. You know, David said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me, but it's not because of anything that we ourselves may have done but it was the prayers of our grandparents. It was the deeds of our fathers. And that's why, because God is just such a sovereign God. Hallelujah. That some things that come into our lives and we're like, what did I do to deserve this? I didn't do anything to deserve this. No, you didn't. It was the prayers of your great, 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 great grand and the deeds of your great, 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 great grand or your father, your father's father that God never forgot because he's just such an awesome God. And he's that kind of God that he never forgets. He never slumbers, he never sleeps and he never forgets. And when brother Kirk started to just bring back or not even bring back that was a revelation that wow some of the things that we are now reaping is from what our daddy everybody just think that everything is all about curses all oh, because your parents did that but what about the blessings yes, yes come on <laughs> what about the blessings you know your grandmother used to feed the children in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. God remembers that. Yes. She may not have reaped it, but guess what? Her mm -hmm. great, 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 great grandson is going to reap that. Mm -hmm. So when I think about just, I mean, God is just so big. We can't even fathom. You know, he's bigger than the universe. He's the creator of it. 
earth is this one little dot. I mean, if you think about the sand on, 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 on the seashores that stop the waters from going wherever, you know, that's what earth is to God. And we're just his creation. Yes, he, yet he chooses to remember our generations way back and what they did. And even though they may be sleeping now, God is still blessing us yeah. because of what they did. Yes. So it's so important mm -hmm. to be intentional mm. in what we sow, mm. how we sow, and to be forever grateful. Because even if we don't see it today, when we go to sleep, our generations to come will be able to reap those blessings. Glory. And I just, you know, we're not in a building, but we are in one accord. Mm, glory to and you. that's just cause to say hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. I feel the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord is in this place. And as you say, as you rightfully said, uh, woman of God, it is not about building. It's about the coming together and being in one accord, having one mind and being joined together on a common cause, which is to expose Christ and his teaching and his love. Sometimes we need to ask the question, why the rush? Why the rush? Why do we have to always be in such a rush? This world has, 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 has programmed us to always want to speed along. We get fast cars. We have everything, every, uh, computer fast, phone fast. It's all about speed, microwave. Everything is quick. Could that be a, a condition in our mind to, to lose patience, to not understand? James is right here now emphasizing how, how important it is for us to really stay with God's process and to endure. The word is endure, endure, endure. Christ had to carry his cross. He had to carry it. He had to move. He had to carry it. He labored, whatever it may be. Christ, the word of God says it will be worth it. The songwriter said, I will, I, I, I will, I will cleave to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. There is a process. And we need to stop from trying a shortcut to fast track, to speed what God is doing. Let us endure. The key word here is to endure. Because those who endure to the end shall receive that crown. It is not well, it is not how you start, people of God. And I want to show you here, we're going to talk a little bit our, our, our James values and, and our God values. Um, he, he breaks down the book and, and, and some things that he highlighted at each chapter as to how he wants us to be some of the character. And we're going to close out in prayer. One of the things that he says in James 1 and 4, he says, people who endure the test and trial will be rewarded. In verse, in verse 5 through to 9, he speaks about the trust factor and that we cannot allow nothing to persuade us away that we start losing hope. In our studies, we have seen, we follow the patriots, and we see what happened when the people of God turn away from the promises and the covenant of God and get caught up with things that are popular and common. We have to make sure that we keep our eyes focused on God. I want to wrap this up right now, and I'm going to be obedient to the Spirit of God, but I know there are people out there, whatever it is. You started off today, evangelist, with this prayer. And I believe that that prayer has gone ahead and something has happened in the atmosphere. We, I can feel there's, there's this, it is like the Bible speaks about the cloud of witnesses. I can feel like heaven and the host is paying attention. Sometimes it is not so much about the noise because remember there was a whirlwind and God was not in it. There was, you know, there was a earthquake and God was not in it. Sometimes it's in the still small voice. And God is speaking. And if you are within earshot of what you heard today and you say, you know what? 
I want to slow down. I want to put some bricks on what I am doing. I'm tired of going through. You ever, you ever search yourself and realize that I, I leave this job and I go to another job and it seems like I keep getting the same boss. Every one of my bosses treat me this way. I, I come out of one relationship, I go into one relationship and the same thing keep happening, reoccurring. Because there is something that you are supposed to overcome, and because we keep succumbing to it, and God, as what evangelists say, we want to, we are supposed to move from one step from 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 from, from grace to grace, from from heights to heights, and we are supposed to move from level to level. But when we find ourselves falling, pray, then we have to go back and repeat the process that we just studied with Joseph. It took Joseph a certain amount of years, and we spoke about the process, and we say. Per adventure, could it be that during that process, he had to deal with himself? He had to come to a resolution to accept to a point where God could entrust him with the position. There is a position that God wants to put in somebody's hand today. But he says, before I can put it into your hand, I need you to process. I need you to let patience have its perfect work in you. Huh? that you may be lacking nothing. Joseph was lacking nothing. And so when the brothers thought that their father was dead and he's going to take vengeance, he's, he, he wept again. He said, you don't understand. I've been through the process. There were nights when I was in the pit and I cried out to God and I was hurting and no, you were not there, but I went through the process and I told God, I made a covenant with God when, when Patiphar's wife pounced upon me and no one was there watching, I made a commitment, I made a covenant, I, am, I went through the process. What you see me doing now is no fake, is no camouflage, is no, is no hypocrisy, is nothing that is, that is just a show. It is, it is a process that I have been through and it has brought me to this position that Pharaoh had to carve out that no one else that has walked the path could sit on this throne. This was no prime minister. It wasn't, it wasn't a seat that was created before. It's a place that God uniquely carved out for Joseph because of the unique path that he has walked. Do not abort the process. Let Patience, let, let the work have its, let it have its perfect work in you, that you will be lacking nothing. We want to go into prayer. Go ahead, minister, and, and, um, and, and share again before you go. Open your mic, minister. Open your mic. Uh, no, now it's open. Yes, now it's open. Pastor, I just wanted to share. Um, I know you said, um, you know, we could send personal messages. Yes. But I think this, I got this vision for you and I wanted to share it with the church mm -hmm. so that when it becomes and when it actually manifests that it will be said, I saw you through this forum, mm -hmm. minister seeing you through this particular forum, Pastor Wayne Stutter, mm -hmm. and that you would be invited because of how you have been obedient and have treated his fellowship differently. Mm -hmm. And because of this, ministers, other servants of God are now watching and they're now amazed. And now they want to go into your forum the way that you're doing things. And I see you being invited to big stadiums, mm -hmm. big ministries. But pastor, I not only see it where people are going to now start doing church the way that we're doing church, but I see books. I see people inviting you all over the world. And I see where you're signing books. You're releasing videos of how we do church, of how God wants it to be, where it is. Come. Lord, hallelujah. Let's fellowship. Let's be and I wanted that not just to be just for your ears. But for at any time that you may forget, someone that you may not even know will remember, Pastor, you had gotten this one yeah. and now it has manifested. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. God be praised. God bless you, woman of God. I receive that. And the confirmation is in my spirit as we taught in, in the lesson that you have to confirm it. God will not send a word until he confirms it. God be praised. People of God, 
The love of God is real. God loved us so much that he gave us his most precious gift. And I'm going to turn it over to the evangelist. I'm going to turn it over to the evangelist department, evangelist department just to take care of this right now in terms of the call between uh, evangelists um, Denver and, and evangelists in training. Um, um, Brother Kirk, I don't know what, what, how you're going to take it out, evangelist, but go ahead. Hallelujah. And you guys Come in to close us out, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Glory, hallelujah. Go ahead, go ahead. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Come on, Brother Kirk, go ahead and just close us out and do that call for salvation. Um, we just want to bless the Lord because the spirit of the living God is in this place. Bless you, Lord. The spirit of God says we are the spirit of God is there is liberty. Liberty, liberty. And you need to know that who the Son set free is free indeed. Go ahead. Yes, and God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, O Lord, for these revelations that you have placed upon our hearts, Lord God Almighty. The word cut like a two-headed sword, Lord God, and it tears down barriers in the name of Jesus. And it plants the seed that will grow in due season, Lord God Almighty. And right now, Lord God Almighty, we pray for protection of the ministry and protection of the members of the group here. PLM members, Lord God Almighty. And we pray that the outsiders looking in, Lord Jesus, will come and know that this is sound doctrine that is preaching here. And this is no joke business, Lord God Almighty, because your business is solid business. Your business is precise. Your business is holy. And you say, they that worship you, that worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord God Almighty, we call on you now, Lord God, to come and secure Secure this house, Lord. Secure this is your house. Come and dwell. Hallelujah. This is your house, Lord. Come and dwell. Come and rest, Holy Spirit, on this ministry. And moving forward, Lord, we ask you to reveal. Let the revelations tear up, Lord God Almighty. And let people move into their purpose, Lord Jesus Christ. Because, Father God, what we do know will play on us later. So we have to plant the seed now and we have to believe that you are the Christ. Yeah. We have to come and believe that you are the Christ. Amen. Come, I say, one and all. Come. Yeah. This is the Christ. Yeah. Come to him. He is knocking on your door. And we ask no Lord God Almighty that whosoever Lord God Almighty that is hurting at this moment, you may give them comfort, give them a comfort of heart, take them away from the new age Lord God, take them from all these teaching of cult Lord God Almighty and let these pastors hope in their mouth and spew the word out and not sweep your word under the carpet. Lord God, we pray for sound doctrine in this age, in this time, Father God Almighty. Bless us again, Lord. Bless the ministry. Lead your pastor. Lead your evangelists. Lead your ministers. Lead your servants. Lead your friends, Lord God, because we are in it together. Love is the answer. And we pray mm -hmm. now that you will watch over us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't it an amazing thing when the Spirit of God shows up? That that sweet, that sweet presence. The songwriter says, There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know it is the Praise presence God. of the minister. Can you sing that song? Just do, do you know that song, Minister Nani? Can you just sing it before we go? Sweet Holy Spirit. Do you know it? Uh not all the words. Sweet oh, right. Holy Spirit. <laughs> Sweet heavenly dove, come on. Sweet heavenly love. Stay right here with Stay us. Stay right here with us. Filling us with your love. us with your love. And for these blessings. We our hearts in lift our hearts Happy. with praise. Without a doubt, we'll know that we have been revived. 
when we shall leave this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Sister time. Janet. Please do that There's once more. There is a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. There are sweet expressions on each face. For I know they feel the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove. Hallelujah. Stay right here with us. Glory, hallelujah. us with your love. And for these blessings, we lift our hearts in praise without a doubt we know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus 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 I'll pronounce the benediction. We may leave this line, but not the presence of God. You continue. Hallelujah. Worship in your home. Worship on your job, whatever. If you have to whisper it under your breath, the prayer has been prayed. The word of God has gone forth. Keep your heart and mind stayed on him. He has promised he will keep you in perfect peace, whose mind and heart is stayed on him. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the throne of God. To him, the only wise God, be glory, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. Glory and honor be unto God. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts, let it be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. We bless the Lord. We bless the Lord. We bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we say, go forth and do his will. And may he cover and keep you and protect you under his wings. In the name of Yeshua Amashiach. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Enter Shabbat Shalom. God bless you. Amen. Let God be praised. Thank mm -hmm. you.